I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. It's an extremely hot day. Uh, we almost didn't get there. I went with a group from the South Bronx where I lived, and uh, we left before dawn, and it was supposed to be about a four and a half hour trip turned out to be about seven hours because, as the bus driver told us, the bus was equipped with a device called a governor, which was a speed control device. It was set at 40 miles an hour. That's the fastest the bus could go. So on the New Jersey Turnpike, where the speed limit was 60, everybody passed us. Philadelphia Urban League, Boston NAACP, this church, that church. We got there after the ceremony had begun. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. What a lot of people don't realize is that there's a lot more, there was a lot more to the march than just the I Have a Dream speech. It was a huge program with all kinds of people speaking. Uh, Roy Wilkins spoke, Whitney Young spoke, A. Philip Randolph spoke. Uh, John Lewis, now a member of Congress, spoke. We got there just after he finished. He really lit the place up with some in-your-face rhetoric about what the Kennedy administration had failed to do in the civil rights movement. And people, I think that may be the first time I ever saw somebody give a high five. They were really excited about that. Uh, and his speech was quite the departure from the relatively docile nature of the civil rights movement. He was really on fire, but we missed that. Um, I remember when Martin came up to speak, this huge hush came over 250,000 people. If you can imagine that many people getting that quiet, it was, it was something to behold. And he, everybody had heard his uh, rhetoric in the past, but there was just something special about that day uh, and, and the way he expressed himself. It was, it was like being in church, man. It was yeah. just unbelievable. Um, and then when it, was, when it was over, it was like nobody's feet was touching the ground because uh, everybody was just so, so fired up. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made. I had no idea the extent to which the words would echo through history, but it was very clear that this was a big deal. And uh, the further we got into the day, the, the more evident it became. Uh, I was thinking about this the other day. If you go to a sporting event, you're there with thousands of people. But the people who are uh, making the event happen, the people who are recording the event in history are the ones on the field, or in the case of a concert, the people on the stage. Mm -hmm. Well, the March on Washington, all of us, all 250,000 of us, were the ones making history. I, I think of it as all of us being tiny components in, in this huge statement made uh, which turned out to be the exclamation point of the entire civil rights movement. A mountain of despair, a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. I think he would have mixed feelings if, uh, if he suddenly came back today. I think he would uh, look at the White House and see Barack Obama and say, oh my, the dream really did come true. And then he would see black-on-black uh, -black crime and say, this, this hasn't worked out nearly the way I thought it would. And then he would see the, the division of, the, the polarization of, of politics in this country and how it applies to race and he would say, no, that's, that's not working either. Mm. Uh, but, but I think he would see a lot of good as well. 
And so let freedom reign from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom reign. I, I think about it from time to time, and, and here's what I, I kind of come up with. If you're a new parent, you take a picture of the baby, and that's a very special picture, and you feel real good about it, and then as time goes on, that picture goes into a box somewhere, you don't see it for a few years, then you pull it out, and now the baby who you, whose picture you took when he or she was two days old, now that child is five years old, that picture has exponentially more meaning. Twenty years later, that picture has even more meaning, and that's kind of how I, uh, my memory of the March on Washington goes. It, it's, it was a big deal when I was there, and I was old enough to realize just how significant it was. Um, but today, it's like, wow, I was there, you know, and, and, and like I say, that that was to me the exclamation point of the entire civil rights movement. White men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last.